Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Salim Malavi, and I'm going to talk about uh, methanol as a future proof marine fuel. My, I'm 51 years at the maritime industry veteran, and plus I have a hands on experience on the oil and gas industry and working on an LNG terminal project. I've been in various capacities. I was the director of UAE Flag, was the maritime advisor to the UAE Maritime Administration. I was the senior vice president with the DVP Bank in Rotterdam, the president of Sea Commerce in Houston, Texas, executive vice president Nama Mansika. I hold MSc in Maritime Economics and Logistics and various other professional degrees, as well as uh, uh, academic degrees. Member of Society of Petroleum Engineers in US, the SNEMI, Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers, and various other organizations globally. Our expertise as e-commerce, we are maritime consultants. We have been in the business since 1992, established when I established the e-commerce. I always start my slides by quoting Buddha, because I believe whatever anybody here and say, you don't have to believe that you have to, or you don't have to agree on the reasons. And so you have to do your own uh, in-depth research to form your own opinions. So whatever I'm going to say, that's my opinion, which is backed by various numbers and everything, but still, you have to make your own judgments and you have to uh, form your own opinions. The drivers for this alternate marine fuels are the GAG, I mean, the IMO regulatory requirements and for the reduction of the, now for the reduction of the carbon dioxide going forward to meet the IMO goals. This slide reflects the regulatory drivers that were mid 2023 to 2030, carbon pricing and MBM, long-term development of zero carbon fuels. There are another factors which have come into being, which I'm going to talk a little later. The, in, for the ship owners to select the technology so for the marine future fuels, there are four basic criteria, environmental criteria, the technical criteria, the economic criteria, and other criteria like safe, safety, safe handling, security, public opinion. On the te technical side, the technology, technology uh, obsolescence, fuel properties, propulsion system, and for environmental sites, any oil risk of oil spill or uh, uh, re the emissions reductions. The com then, in addition to the regulatory drivers, they have got commercial and technological drivers. The commercial ones, uh, which have drawn attention towards methanol, major attention towards methanol in recent past, is MERS order of 12 methanol fuel, 16,000 TU vessels at Tungai. And the other one is of the World Bank. Uh, which has issued a report uh, telling the uh, uh, member countries to avoid using LNG because of technology obsolescence. I'm going to show you the slides from the World Bank uh, report, potential realignment of the global bunker fuel market through zero carbon oil drive fuels, which is current, and then in future, they're talking about the biofuels, which includes methanol also, hydrogen and ammonia. Well, I've got my reservations about hydrogen and ammonia, that uh, we'll talk about later. Then this zero carbon fuel options for shipping, it uh, shows you the different path, pathways for ammonia, carbon-based fuels, and zero carbon bunkers. And the Next slide, this shows clearly that the short-term basis 2020 to 2030 
at LNG is fine, the role of transitional role for LNG, but in a very limited role for LNG going forward from 2030, 2050. The roles which, I, which World Bank defines as for biofuels, hydrogen, ammonia, carbon-based synthetic fuels. The frequently asked questions is the, are on this slide. What of the benefits of methanol as a marine fuel? Isn't methanol toxic and all that? I cannot answer all these questions in 15 minutes, but I'll try my best to answer some of the major ones going forward. What are the uses of methanol? Methanol is found in every part of our life. Safety glass lemonade, windshield washer, fluid, car, paint, carpet, adhesive, the chemicals used, plus the transportation in cars, in fuel application for marine, for methanol to elephants, and the power generation or use in the boilers. Why methanol? It's environmentally friendly, low emissions, safe, safe environmentally, available globally, low increment investments, competitive fuel costs, liquid fuel flexibility, and successful in use today, commercialization activity expanding. What, I will continue with the why methanol, but the thing we have to re, coming for going forward, the ship owners have to reduce the carbon footprint. So there are three grades of methanol, gray methanol, blue methanol, and green methanol, which has got different carbon emissions uh, levels. But the best thing about this is being a fluid fuel, a gray to blue to green facilitating, to, facilitating, facilitating blending and reduce carbon intensity as low carbon and net carbon neutral fuels. It's already the benefits on reducing the pollutants like sulfur dioxide, NOx, and PM are already in practice today, and I've got the results. I will show you that. So the, what is the marine cycle, marine fuel life cycle chain? The fossil fuels on the left side and the, are derived from the cut of the crude barrel, and from on the right side, which is uh, derived from natural gas, which includes methanol, LNG, uh, ammonia, and hydrogen also. Principal methanol, methanol production pathways are biomass, the renewable electricity, natural gas, and coal, which is used as a feedstock. If you use coal, you get brown coal. If you use natural gas, you get gray. And uh, if you use a renewable electricity, it's blue and biomass is green. So each one of them has got a different carbon footprint and uh, that will be reflected in the next slides to come. GHG emissions on well to wake basis for the life cycle analysis. If you, uh, you can see on the left-hand side graph, you, from MDO is 85, LNG with zero methane slip, which is what people show you all the time, is about 65. Then the LNG with methane slip, which contributes 25 gram CO2 equivalent per MJ, is close to 95. And methanol from natural gas is slightly better than LNG uh, uh, with the methane slip in it. But methanol produced from bio waste is, has got a very low carbon footprint. It is given in the blue columns on the right hand side. Even ethanol has got a higher carbon footprint than methanol when they even produce from used corn or sugar cane. On the right hand graph, we have got the global warming potential. And the graph is, it speaks for itself that biomethanol is extremely environmentally friendly and it has got very low emissions on uh, global warming potential also. This, is, this slide I've taken from Methanol Institute's uh, recent publication. The European Sustainable Shipping Forum applies zero emission to e-fuels when produced from renewable energy. This is not entirely correct because solar PV has a carbon footprint of about CO4, 4 gram 
CO2 equivalent per kilowatt, and wind has got seven gram CO2 equivalent per kilowatt, with hydro about 19 grams. So the day, most of the graphs which you see on the life cycle analysis basis, that's not reflected. This is the same slide I've gone back forward. Yeah. Then uh, pollution from methanol. You can see that methanol is better than diesel by 240, factor of 240, better by gasoline 1900. There's 15,400 milligrams per liter of methanol with when any uh, danger to uh, of the lethal concentration of 50% and there is some danger to the marine life. Otherwise, whereas methane or LNG is 49.9 gram milligrams per liter, heavy oil is 79 grams per liter. Next slide I'll show you is on this uh, simulation on the basis of 10,000 tons of released amount of methanol. Affected coastline, zero. Cleaning, zero. Killing bird, killed birds, zero. But if you look at the Erica with 19,000 tons, the tourist industry was affected by 400 to 500 million, claim for damages 120 million, and so on and so on. If 10,000 tons of methanol at open seas release the concentration of 0.36% after one hour, in the release of 10,000 liter per hour from coastal pier, the concentration is 0.36 after one hour and 0.13 after three hours. It's as far less hazardous to, to the environment comparing to the other fuels. This is just to show you the comparison on the basis of uh, hazard comparison. Methanol, diesel, and gas, their pictograms reflects everything. Methanol is available globally in more than 100 ports in the world. And uh, it's just, uh, the infrastructure is very easy to develop. It's not very expensive because the existing infrastructure can be converted into uh, existing fossil fuel tanks, can be converted with little modification in very, very inexpensive way into uh, to storage of methanol and delivery of methanol. MERSC, has give, the MERSC announcement has been the game changer for the use of methanol as marine fuel. Now the interest from the ship owners, the associated industry players are getting very much interested in methanol. And uh, I get a lot of questions asked and so does the Methanol Institute and the, the methanol producers about the interest which is coming from, from all directions and all segments of the industry. The, this is the experience of waterfront shipping, which is the operator of uh, methanol powered vessels, MR2s, since 2016. And you can see the SOX was reduced to a 99%, the NOx tier three compliance reduction of 80% plus, and for particulate matter 95%. The ship, the fuel on both the ships are stored at the, on the in tanks, which requires the volumetric capacity. Volume is being used from the ship. And you can see from the slide that the diesel says it's, it's got a storage capacity, uh, is the highest, as methanol is much lower at 15, and LNG and uh, ammonia and hydrogen, they are all cryogenic fuels and they require heavy store, heavy uh, uh, to, to the volumetric density, the volumetric storage capacity. This graph reflects the, the heat map for the sailing instructions. And uh, I'm of the opinion that since methanol is miscible in water, it poses no risk of pollution and the, in the larger vessel have sufficient ballast capacity that can be utilized for dual use with minor safety and other modification. Now, methanol and marine fuel cost benefit. This slide I've taken from uh, uh, MAN, and it shows 11% of uh, cheaper when it is done on the chlorophyll value, the methanol in comparison to the VLSFO. Comparison to alternate fuel distribution cost, 
for alcohol fuel like methanol and ethanol at $60 billion versus $3 trillion for investment is required in the infrastructure for hydrogen and $1 trillion required for the battery. And this is based on the research which was done in China and basically it's China focused. Now, technological uh, technology readiness, the diesel marine gas is nine liquefied LNG in methanol or eight to nine and hydrogen, ammonia, CCS, they're all some time to go. The first time ammonia powered engine will be online 2025 and still to be tested and used in conclusions. Methanol is an environmentally friendly fuel, low emissions and future proof fuel because you don't have to go to the drawing board. You can change over from gray methanol, use of gray methanol to green methanol without any problems. It's, it's, since it is in the fluid state, it's easy to handle and store, which is similar to the existing fuel. Green methanol or biomethanol has near zero footprint, as I've shown you before, broad range of feedstock is available to produce either gray, which uses natural gas, or green methanol, which uses uh, the waste. By the, the methanol is available globally in over 100 ports. And my personal opinion, the cost of bunkering for uh, the comparison to the other fuels like LNG, ammonia, and hydrogen methanol is much more cost effective and uh, easy to use fuel. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, kindly direct them to me. I will be more than happy to uh, answer those questions for you. Thanks. And have a great day.